Hello everybody, welcome to Cape Town TV and of course it's another episode of uh, Cape Rugby Live at 9 o'clock on Wednesdays. We certainly hope you manage to bring your friends along. Tonight, as usual, we'll take a look at the results, the fixtures, the logs. It's been an interesting weekend, that is for sure. Hopefully the weather is not getting to you. But before we get down to business tonight, let me introduce you to my esteemed panel. As usual, the old faithful, not literally, the young faithful then, let me call it that. Herman Abrams, Deputy CEO of Western Province Rugby. Hello, Herbie. Good evening. You're looking very smart tonight. I would like to say the night is young and so am I. <laughs> Bring on the pressure. <laughs> Mom, it's right, boy, all the way from Durban. Nice to have you back. Thank you very much, JP. Hope and you Egan Seconds, uh, filling in our history feature tonight. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, James. <laughs> Listen, gentlemen, we might as well start right at the beginning. Let's take a look at um, some of the results over the weekend. Uh, and, and it was certainly a, a couple of interesting results there. I got the two of you, yeah. really, last <laughs> week, you were sitting here like mortal enemies. It was going to be Hammies against Durbel, and we had all sorts of speak. I mean, let me just start with you then, before I, I you know, normally go losing captain first. Yeah. The kind of thing, you know. 27-34. Uh, <laughs> this surely isn't what you guys expected against Durbel, eh? No, not at all. Um, it was one of those games that, uh, you know, Durbel played an awesome brand of rugby, and uh, our guys were just low in confidence, and it, it, it showed on the field. They took advantage of it, and when we tried to get back in the game, it was too late again. Yeah, yeah. Marvin? I mean, you guys must be thrilled. You worked hard for it all season, pretty much. Definitely worked hard in the week, especially. Mm. Especially Monday's practice was very positive. Went into a, a positive mode, knowing what we needed to do. Yeah. And we did that on the field. And it showed in the last few minutes, like Egan said, they tried to come back. I mean, for example, the last three minutes. I mean, we defended our line for a full three minutes. They just kept on coming, 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 which yeah. was quite amazing. How do you train much for defense like that? You d definitely have a lot, a lot of drills. You have two, basically have your seconds and your first team playing against each other. Yeah. So the first team will defend for at least 10 to 15 minutes at a time before right. actually swapping, and I then mean, they will attack. You can, I mean, from a, from a, if you, I mean, you've, you've, you've played at all different levels, you know, at, at the absolute highest level. Yeah. Is that what it gets down to in preparation, is drills after drills after drills? It's, it's repeating, you know, you get used to something if you repeat it the whole time. Yeah. And I mean, where defense, you know, defense is an attitude also. You know, to put in those big hits and those tackles to keep guys away from your try line, it's important that your attitude is positive. Yeah. And ha hammies were coming, all guns blazing. But I mean, it's, it's difficult when you start playing catch up, you know, you, you've got to start the game like that. And yeah. if you're playing catch up with a team they were fielding and, and the positivity they took out of the previous week that they also had a good result, we were always going to, you know, play second fiddle to them on Saturday. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure um, Anton Wormann is not yeah. happy with, uh, with the things, <laughs> the way that they're going at the moment. I can uh, tell you, we, in a row. we had a bit of a copper stump again on Monday, so <laughs> just, to, just to get the attitudes right. <laughs> just, to, just to remind you where, where you're positioned. Yeah. Let's look at some of the other results then uh, over the weekend, folks. Um, uh, another uh, rather disappointing um, defeat there, Mr. H. Villagers going down to false pay. Of course, uh, Kevin Musicamp from Villagers must be absolutely thrilled with the, with the performance of his team. But Villagers are really battling a little bit, huh? Yeah, I think at the moment they seem to have lost confidence you know, as a team. And yeah. I think probably that happened to Hamilton also last Saturday. After the hype of having to qualify for the club championships and then losing that game yeah, yeah. and then the next year you know, the wins were out of their sails. Yeah. Where do we stand at the moment in terms of who's going to club champs? There was a Martis. quite a, is it Martis? Martis will go. Yeah. But there was a bit of talk and maybe we can just um, in, enlighten the visitors, the viewers on that. Um, there was quite a lot of talk about um, the, uh, the fact that maybe a varsity team would not be going to the club champs? That, that was a suggestion. Western Province objected to that. Yeah. And uh, they've accepted that the varsities will take part this year. But I believe it's on the table again at SA rugby level that no varsity will play in club championships. Yeah. That means if we had gone, like when, when, when this thing was, you know, two, three weeks ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. our fourth team would have gone to, to the club champs. Why is that? Because Martis was at top, Martis. Vix second, and UCT third. Oh, of course, yes. Vix is of course, who, Vix is of yeah. course the university yeah. side as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank heavens, UWC is not playing in the Super League. We'd have nobody left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My personal opinion: yes, let the Varsities play in the Varsity Cup, and let the rest of the clubs come through and play in the 
play with, uh, with the big boys in uh, the club champs. I think that's enough exposure for all the universities out there, unless you're below Super League A. That's just my opinion. I did tweet a, a, a little bit earlier on for you guys, uh, folks, um, about the fact that I'm pretty grumpy at the moment, that I'm rather upset. And those of you that know me from my radio days will certainly know that I don't hold pull punches. Tonight I've got a few things to say. But first, before I say that, we went out to St. George's over the weekend. St. George's played against um, Crawfontaine. It was quite a tough match. Uh, why don't you have a look at some of the footage? Join us. Certainly some fantastic stuff happening there. St. George's up against um, Cryfontaine over at Gastro in the, the Strand area. Folks, remember last week we asked you to join us on Facebook. Well, looking at Facebook now, we're on 714 um, Facebook fans. We know that you're out there. We know that you're live. And we know that you're on Facebook, either on your PC or on your mobile. Tonight, I'm giving away a set of double tickets to the Stormers semi-final at Newlands. But I need you to get on Facebook, and I'm going to choose one lucky winner from tonight's uh, Facebook group. That uh, website is www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Just jump on there and uh, one of you is going to be the lucky winner of a set of double tickets to go and watch the Stormers take on the uh, whoever's in, in the fourth place. We don't know yet, right? No. It's, it's a combination of the, the, War, uh, the Waratahs, the Blues, the Crusaders yeah, yeah. and the Reds. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be one of them. All right. Uh, Mr. H, um, St. George's, uh, Crawfontaine. Um, obviously, <laughs> I think Crawfontaine was looking for a better result, but it uh, didn't quite go their way. No, and uh, surprisingly so, because the conditions at that field suited Crawfontaine much better with a heavier pack of forwards, mm, but mm. they didn't use them. Yeah. They, they couldn't, and you know, the, the speed of the St. George's backs had carried them. I mean, we saw one of those, unfortunately, that try wasn't given. Yeah, the guy with, but I mean that was the speed that was available there. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, um, I'm, 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 now, folks, you get to that moment where I say my say, which uh, so if you're a, a, a sensitive viewer, I suggest you, you 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 put your hands over your ears. 
Mr. H, talking about the fact that Crafontaine arrived there and they didn't expect the field to be so wet. If you're a councillor out in the Strand area, let me tell you I'm rather disgusted. I'm absolutely disgusted in the fact that the drainage at this field was a shocker. Not to mention the fact, or more importantly, that St. George's had absolutely no lights because the lights, cables had been stolen. And this is not only about rugby. Right next to them, there was a soccer field, also without any lights. They are waiting for you in that department to come and install the electricity. And we would like at Cape Town TV and Cape Rugby to see you fix those fields. That's why you're the elected councillor. Please get off your backside and go and fix it. I did not really appreciate the fact that we had to go to an aftermatch function where people are trying to do great work. And what were they doing? They were doing great work under a gas lamp. Right, there's many, 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 many clubs in Western Province Rugby that need the same kind of support. So please, if you're an elected official, go and help our club rugby guys. They need it desperately. Mr. H, I'm not well going to... Thank you. Well said. Thank you. Of course, this is not a union thing. <clears throat> no. Because the clubs are uh, on, using, on council property. Exactly. Okay, can we just get clarity on that? The properties out there are not your responsibility. No, it's not our responsibility. Because when we drove up there, there was a big sign on Gastro's change room that said city council or whichever department it is with that lovely logo, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of multicolored logo. Well, there you have it. If you're out there, fix the fields for the clubs. All right, that's my little rant and rave. Let's get back to the rugby. <laughs> We did have a chat with the coach and captain of uh, Craftfontein and, of course, the coach and captain of uh, St. George's. Let's hear what they had to say. Ja, dat is moeilijk. Omstandigheden was ook niet helemaal van ons gewoon te zien. Maar uh, op het einde van de dag, redelijk vinnig ook in die situatie. Maar ja, bij fout ook gemaakt in ons kan. Ja, ik geloof zo. Vooral van die vaste facet af um, was hij zo statisch als altijd die. En uh, vandaar af kunnen mensen altijd die beweging zien, zodat mensen oefenen. Tactisch is kopwerk in de tweede helft was veel goed. En dan net dat hij twee besluiten werd genomen is om palen toe te scoop waar het gemaakt is dat het drie voor ons bij drie printjes zou gezet hebben. Nee, ik denk bij die, bij die losgemalen als uh, optel en drijf het voor ons goed gewerkt. Um, ik denk ook net als al meer als, uh, als je eenheid tussen voor en achter moet, moet samen spelen. Maar nu hebben ze een paar goede dingen ook gedaan en ik geloof ik kan dat ook verbeteren. Um, I'm really disappointed. I think we had our best uh, defensive game today. Um, we just didn't protect the ball enough. I think that what George did well today, uh, they protected the ball. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you can't play rugby without the ball. We take it week for week. Um, we don't actually worry that much about the opposition. We try and play our game and uh, just work on defence. Uh, they, uh, they have to beat our defence if they want to play their game. So that's so why we do now work for week for week. We uh, take, as I said, team week for week and uh, we build on our strength. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, as I said, you can't play rugby without the ball. As I said, we're a very young team and they come in week, after week, week in after week and uh, we just pick ourselves up and just try again for next week. Yeah, I'm happy with the end result, it's not as we've played. We've played the basic facet, we've played the wins and the set pieces. But the season is long and that's why we're not going to win. Als maanden aan het is gewoonlijk als prep sessie, dan zijn ze aan haar contact en dan eindig ons ook af op het onderdag aan met technische aspecten. Ons is een gemeenschap, klap ons veel van die gemeenschap, zoals je kan zien met bij jong kinders op die veld. Ons proberen om rolmodellen en een positieve aspect in die gemeenschap uit te zijn. Thuis, we zijn gecommitted, we zijn in paniek en we stikken de gameplan. Het is een beetje scrappy, omdat de conditions van het veld zijn, maar... We never panicked and that is cool. It's not easy to know if we go to Tavius and we grab the energy and we walk in Spanish. We have a lot of talent, but the most important thing is talent that gel. I think we're coming to a point where all the people are coming to a point where we are on the pressure of ourselves. But it's a good pressure. We just have to handle it. We're playing Rangers on Saturday. It's not going to be easy. We've beaten them here at Castro. So they're waiting on us and it's always a tight game against Rangers. We've got lots of work to do. Well, there you have it, folks. So those boys there from St. George's uh, up against Craftfontaine at uh, Gastro over the weekend. Nice to get out there. And just a friendly reminder, councillors, please get your act together. We're waiting to see you support rugby. Something like 17,500 club rugby players, and not to mention all the high schools and primary schools, 
Where do you think your community's at? That's where they are. So make sure that you support them. All right, let's look at some of the other results then. Um, uh, but just before I go on, Mr. H, St. George was, of course, founded by your grandfather. Yes, sir. Yes, I just want to double check there. We never, we're, we are never sure who found that club. All right. Mary Josephs, by the way, asked if we say hello. And by the way, folks, on Facebook, I am giving away at the end of the show a set of double tickets to go and watch uh, that semi final at Newlands. And the Facebook group is growing as we speak. We've just picked up another 30 members. We want you to jump on. Remember, that's where you have your say. And you, as a community, very important that you actually get on Facebook, get on Twitter, and say your say. Let's look at some of the other results then over the weekend. Young Peoples, uh, a close one for Primrose there, 14-9. Mr. H? They moved away from the bottom of the log. They moved away from the bottom yeah. log. Tight results though. Kazak River, 25-20 over Collegians. Tigerberg, nice result for them, 46-25. Um, uh, Marvin, is that the kind of result you expected? Tigerberg, very happy at the moment. They definitely want to come back into Super League A. Yeah. So they've done very well in their first half of the season. They must just make sure they don't slip at second half. Yeah. Because obviously, yeah. you know, Rugby's not finished yet. It's Anything not. can happen in the second round. <laughs> Anything could happen. Absolutely. In the round. Iggy Belleville, um, yeah. a nice win for them, eh? 45 14 over mm -hmm. Penil Villages. Yeah, and that is very healthy that they're breathing down Tigerberg's neck like that yeah. to keep it competitive and it's not just a, a, a one off show anymore. And even in the Super League, you get that. The competition is so tough these days. Are yeah. the clubs aware of it though? I mean, you know, most of us, we play a little bit of rugby, you go to a game and the, 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 you, know, you, you join a club close by. Yeah. But are, are, the, are the players like. Aware of the log positions? Do they know where they stand? No, no. I think you're going to a match knowing exactly where really? you're standing. <laughs> <laughs> Even the coaches remind you, you know, what's at stake. Um, but I mean, with, with Belleville and Tigerberg, I mean, you know, the guys like Bollock and Radio, and they're all still involved there, which of is course, awesome yeah. to see. Yeah. And um, those derbies are big. I mean, you, you'd rather go watch a derby like that because you know it goes down to the wire. Well, well, that's exactly what we've been saying for so long. Derbies don't only happen in Super League A. Yeah. Derbies happen yeah. ac across across the board altogether. Yeah. And of course, our final result there in Super League B, um, a nice, uh, well, not a nice, but an enormous win for NNK over hands and hearts, 68 points to 21. When we get back, we'll take a look at the rest of the results. And of course, don't forget those competitions still coming up this evening. Um, we'll be giving away a uh, night's accommodation courtesy, courtesy of Leisure Hotels. At the Fountain Hotels, we'll be giving away 500 rands worth of Evox products. And don't forget the fact that you can win yourself a set of double tickets to go and watch the uh, Stormers in that semi-final at Newlands. If you are on Facebook, jump on right now. We're trying to break all the records here. www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. We'll see you on Facebook in a mo. Back right now. Well, we're back live here, folks. It's Cape Rugby TV. Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, repeats on Thursday at 3 and, of course, at 11 o'clock. Hello, Uzair Abrams has jumped on on Facebook. Nice to have you along. And he says, I agree with you 100%. Regards with to the fields management services on the flats. We certainly need a lot more support in that space. So, yes, absolutely. Thank you for that, um, Uzair. In Super League A and Super League B, Mr. H, uh, I mean, there's quite a few tries scored there. Huh? Yeah, this weekend, over 50 tries over 400 points. And that is exactly what the customer come to see. Yeah. The entertainment value that's there. And it's great that we can score so many tries, you know. Because people don't want to come see a game that ends in a no-no draw, you know. Well, I, I, I get the feeling, and I mean, Marvin, let me ask you, I get, the, uh, you know, I get the feeling that sometimes we watch too much TV. And we want to play defensive rugby as if you're Jake White going to the World Cup. This is club rugby, there's a difference, right? <laughs> Definitely, and I mean, we did emphasize it early in the shows that uh, Cape Town's rag brand of rugby is running rugby. Yeah. So from running rugby, you will get that result of tries coming along. And obviously, we're not playing that stump car, wanting that null-null result, as Mr. Yeah. H.S. said. Yeah. Egan, I'm, 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 I'm going to ask you, I mean, you pl having played at, at, at such high levels, you played for the Springbok Sevens, you played for the Stormers, you played for Western Province Rugby, you, play, you played for Creek Wars, you played... And, and, and now you play at club level. It must yeah. be for you a little bit like playing against kids because surely when you're playing club rugby, it's about the basics. Yeah. You don't have to get fancy. You don't need to learn too many drills. Yeah. Literally, I mean, I, if you just know a little bit about your opponents, yeah. you can just, am I right? It's about the basics? No, it's definitely about the basics. Um, I just have to comment saying if I, I wish I was playing against kids because then I would score more tries again, Jace. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> these days, you know, especially if you come from a professional, you know, I mean, the guys are out to show that they are better than you are. Yeah. Um, so you always have to, be, have to be at the best 
of your ability and of your game also. Yeah. Um, where the clubs are concerned, you know, that's where you start. The brand of rugby goes right through the bank. Western Province plays that kind of brand of rugby. Stormers plays the running kind of rugby. So it has to stem from somewhere and it comes through the club system and it shows by the results yeah. and the scores that the clubs are up to it. And that's, it has to be like that if our unions wants to do well. Yeah. That, it, that the same brand of rugby has to come through because that's where our future stars are going to come from. Well, I don't think you need to be scoring any more tries because I think you scored enough tries for Western Province. Um, <laughs> I think you scored enough tries for, for four lifetimes for Western Province. Uh, aren't you one of the record holders at Province for tries? I'd rather let you say it than I yeah, say Yes, so you're the record holder. <laughs> <laughs> most, I, think, I think most tries scored for Western Province rugby. We've got to look at those. And, you know, the I say it. <laughs> but certainly we've got a legend in the making, not in the making, but a legend here at, uh, on Cape Rugby. So nice to have him along. Let's quickly look at some of the other results then, folks. In um, Premier League, eh, it was a great uh, result then for St. George's over Craftontain. 16 points to 5. <coughs> Elsie's ever went down to Paul 17 14. And uh, Stelcor going down to Goodwood 29 22. Scottsdean beat Hamlets 26 19. Lunga, victory for them over Rangers 26 13. In Premier League B, French Hook and Silver Leaf had a 0 0 draw. That's quite a surprise result. Macassar, a good win for them 30 over uh, Silver Trees 22. Lagunia 27 15 over Strand United. Milnerton going down to Solarians 33 points. To 24. In Division 1, Northern's a nice big result for them. 46-14 over Powell Rangers. Kyle Moore, 5 for them against Wraithby Universals. 24. We'll come back to Wraithby Universals a little bit later. I think we might have some excellent fan footage. Erste Revere losing to Young Wesley's 5 points to 3. That's a tight game. Borland Mark beating Strand 22-14. And Young Stars drawing with Hamadias. We'll come back to Division 2 in a minute. Um, Marvin, when you look at a low-scoring game like that, um, in this case here, yeah, Kyle Moore, um, uh, at least not Kyle Moore, Erste Raffier and, uh, and Young Wesley's 5-3. Yeah. Why? Um, JP, I, would I mean, I, I know you weren't there, but I mean, <laughs> how do you score such a... It like, must be it, it, an equal game? Could, it could be conditions as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, when it's wet and cold and it's, you know, wet underfoot, mm. a lot of the times you try and keep the ball close, and maybe sometimes they try to play an expensive rugby, and then a, a knock would come, it'll be turnover, right? Yeah, Next yeah. team does the same thing. So not a lot of points gets accumulated. So low scoring games usually where weather is, plays a big factor. Yeah, you yeah. usually get those low scores. Egan, when you have a wet game like that, yeah. I mean, this is sort of European style rugby, English rugby, wet games, they play it very tight, right? Yeah, no, no, for sure. They keep it close. Um, with a score like that, you could imagine that the field might have been waterlogged even. Yeah. You know, there's penalties going around and I mean, even with Marvin on Saturday, um, playing at Hamilton's, yeah. he was slipping a lot, taking goal kicks. So that's the only reason you could find for somebody... Marvin was taking goal kicks? He was taking goal kicks, yeah. Do you kick for post? Yes, <laughs> really? Yes. So you're not just a pretty face. <laughs> I have to say, he did kick well, even though he was kicking against my team, but uh, <laughs> I enjoyed the slip so now and then too. <laughs> Well, it sounds to me like the gloves were off, literally. Yeah, I've seen that you got that on your T-shirt. The gloves go. were literally off between <laughs> the two of you. So um, anyway, so let's look at the Divisions 2 results then. Of course, uh, uh, Atlantis, a nice win for them. 9-6 over Rocklands and uh, Blues Jets uh, going down to Blue Stars, 20 points to 15. What's Sonia? Yo, it looks like the wheels are still off for the whistlers. <laughs> Whistling wheels going down by one point. Oh. Maybe they've got an extra wheel back on now because those gaps are getting a little bit closer. Watsonia beating them by just one point only in Temperance. An 18-point to 8 win over All Saints and Strand Pioneers. Uh, going down to Mannenberg, Rangers 14 points to 3. Mr. H, this was one of the games in um, Division 3 that we were begged to come through to, which at some other stage we're going to have to. Uh, Violet's uh, Caledonian Roses. Yeah. And there were quite a couple of people from Cali saying they were going to take this one. But it looks like Violet's did come out, and I think this match was a chucker road. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, Violet's were, you know, in, in the end, they probably the home ground advantage. Yeah. And uh, I heard that after the match, they were not very friendly towards one another. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, we'll find out what happened there. But, you know, it's... Uh, well, there's an probably easy if you lose, if you lose, you must accept that you've lost the game. And if you win, you must also be humble in the victory, you know. There's a very easy way to sort that out. It's called Cape Town TV. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's quite incredible to me that every time we rock up at the side of the field with the camera, 
hoe pronk die mens? Uh, <laughs> is dit hier zo en daar zo en wat voor mij en wat even? <laughs> en het is ongelooflijk als je met die mensen op die camera zit, even skillige hulle beginnen, lijkt alsof hulle jou jaren al op die tv was. Uh. Die uh. Poses and all that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's great fun going out to the games. Oh, and and there, there's been such an appreciation. Um, you know, we were at the SK Women's Hammies games. There was such an appreciation, not only from the players, but from the fans as well. Yeah. They just loved the fact that there was local television covering yeah. club rugby. And I mean, they, because they're so passionate about it, it's, it's nice to see that other people are also interested in it. And I, and I know there's been a lot of question marks about club rugby, and I mean, a show like this is, is fantastic for, especially with club rugby being so strong yeah. in South Africa, in the Western Cape. Are the players talking, Marvin, and the guys at your club? Oh, they? Definitely, they yeah. definitely are. They, they just want to know, how can I get Cape Town to TV. TV on my DSTV. <laughs> Cape <laughs> Rugby needs to go on DSTV. Because yeah. <laughs> they can't find their little bunny area. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you tell your friends they mustn't worry about this show is for the masses, not for the minority. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, so get back to the Facebook page then. We are looking for you to jump on. We're up to 785. We've grown by almost 80 fans. And one of you are going to win yourself a set of double tickets to go and watch the Stormers take on, um, to take on uh, the next semi finalist at home ground at Newlands. Let me quickly say hello to some of you that has just jumped on. Peter Cook. Hello, Peter. Nice to have you along. Peter says, brilliant show. Keep it up. Stormers, Super 15 champs. That's from Wadji. Fredericks, Gert Pretorius say, respect for bringing Cape Town rugby to our doorsteps. Hello, Gert. Thank you for that comment. Waardeer het verschrikkelijk. Kerniels Oerendal. Ik denk... Uh, well, I can only say what Skrneels has said, but our loss is that it looks like me that he doesn't know the Bulls and he what it fat So, Skrneels, thanks for thanks for that comment. In actual fact, it's got something to do with what you see in the background right now, folks. The Evox products, that's what the Stormers use. Skrneels, so, yes. Talking about these, the background here, Folks, an enormous thank. We mentioned it to you last week. Mesa Computers, the official um, technical supplier to Western Province Rugby, has now finally come on board with um, Cape Town TV and Cape Rugby. And as a result, we've got these fantastic images in the background. So uh, massive uh, thanks to the guys from Mesa Computers who are going to be continuing their support throughout the duration of the show. Going back to Facebook, a few other folks have just said hello to us there. And keep them coming in, folks. www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. We want to see if we can break the thousand mark tonight. Brendan Miller, Jerome Pinar, Lynn Estelle Williams. She says... Okay, oh, I'm going to say what she says. Yeah. <laughs> Between me and her. <laughs> yeah, but it, enormous a pleasure to have you guys on board then, folks. So let's take a look then at the last of our results. Um, the, uh, that will, of course, then be in um, Premier, in the Paul region at least. Allendale, 53-36 uh, over Peril United. Albion's going down to lower Paul, 34 points to 8. Um, uh, Vineyards, a nice win for them over Violets, 51 points to 31. A 21 win over um, Riverstones for Simondium and Young Standards. Uh, beating Windmill United, 24 points to 16. Just a little heads up there, folks. We're expecting the Springbok coach on the, soon, uh, on the show soon. Maybe next week, maybe the next week, but he has committed himself. So keep your eyes wide open because the Springbok coach, who's originally from Young Gardens, will be right here on Cape TV. And that is how we roll, so to speak. Let's quickly look at the logs then in Super League, eh? SK Warmers are on top of the log, Mr. H? Yes, yes, they are there. Is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Martis are not playing at the moment, so... Yes, uh, yeah. they're not playing at the moment, but, but um, I mean, SK Warmers must be absolutely thrilled to yeah, be on top of the log. But you look at Durbel, if they win, they could possibly go to number two. Well, that's right, Durbel's got 29 points, mm. Mart, uh, SK Warmers got 34 mm. points. Um, and Marty's are two behind, but Marty's, of course, got a game in hand. Yeah, they yes. all. Yeah, yeah. Um, Iggy, do you, do you think the guys will, at this stage already, of the, at this stage of the season, be starting to prepare for, for, uh, for club champs? At which stage? How far out do you start thinking about club champs? I mean, with, uh, with Marty's going through, I mean, they definitely were the prep busy with the preparation. I know a team like SK Hormuz, because of uh, Ramadan coming on, they've got to catch up their games also. So if they're laying in a, in a healthy position like that, then everybody else has to catch up with them. They've yeah. basically done their job. Where a team like Marty's has to go through club champs and other teams have got to take advantage of the fact that the points are out there to be taken mm. and so that you can lay in a healthy position so that when they come back and play their games in hand, they've got to basically try and catch up with you. 
Yeah, so it certainly looks like it's, uh, one of those strategic. Uh, yeah. You got to you got to work work it out in terms of the season. Um, is that how, does your coach talk to you? Jan Leipzig. He's your. That's correct. Jan Jan's of course there. Coach. Jan Jan was uh, at the Vodacom. Uh, Western Province with uh, Stanley Robenheimer a that's while back. I managed to do a little bit of coaching there with Jan myself. <laughs> uh, that was good fun. Um, but uh, do you guys start thinking strategically early in the season at Turbo? No, we do. We definitely try and make use of taking all our points that we can that's on offer mm. early enough. Uh, we don't want to play up the catch-up rugby because it could, you know, bite you at the end yes, of the day yes, 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 if yes. you don't make use of it. Um, and this league is very much open. As you see, you get the results Falls Bay Villages, yeah. Durbel, Hamiltons. So yeah, yeah. a lot of surprises still ahead. So where you can get points, you must take your five. Let's quickly run through the rest of those logs then. Folks in Super League B, Tigerberg, Belleville and NNK in uh, Premier League A. It's uh, Goodwood and St. George's. Of course, St. George's coming uh, off a powerful result there against Crowfontaine. St. George's sitting firmly in the second place in Premier League A. In Premier League B, UWC, Salarians and Lagunia. Those are your top three there. Let's look at Division 1. Young Wesleys, Yesterafir and Northerns doing fantastically well there. Of course, Yesterafir and uh, Northerns have a game in hand. In Division 2, Watsonia, Rocklands and Manenburg. Those are your top three, followed by Temperance and Blue Stars. Division 3, it's Violets and Caledonian Roses. Of course, a win for Violets over the weekend against Caledonian Roses. It's Gardens Tech or Tech Gardens. They're in the mix there as well, followed by Young Ideas Perseverance. Division 4, it's Marcy 1 against uh, Peninsula, or at least uh, leading there. Peninsula's in second, they've still got two games in hand. And Titans and Imikawi in a third and a fourth place. In the Paul Division, the Paul Region, should I say, it's uh, Vineyards against Lower Paul, followed by uh, Violets and Simondium and Riverstones. When I come back, it's your opportunity to win yourself some accommodation, courtesy of the Leisure Hotel Group. We're giving away another night's accommodation and bed and breakfast at the Fountains Hotel. And a fantastic accommodation it is. We'll be back in a moment. Hello everybody, welcome back Cape Town TV, Cape Rugby TV it is and uh, nice to have you along. The Facebook page is growing steadily and of course one of you lucky winners is going to win for yourself a set of double tickets to Newlands. Of course in the meantime you can win yourself uh, some accommodation courtesy of Leisure Hotels. All you need to do is SMS and there you see in the background now on our Mesa screen, SMS the word Leisure to 32010. That's all we're looking for. 826 members now on Facebook, climbing as we go. Of course, we had, did run the competition for the Leisure Hotels last week. And congratulations to Rebecca Seschel. Congratulations, Rebecca. You win yourself one night's accommodation with bed and breakfast at the Fountain Towers. Remember, folks, if you want to win that same prize, just SMS that word that you see on your screen now, Leisure. SMS that word to 32010. And yes, we are bombarding you with social media and interaction. And that is what we do because we're live and we can. <laughs> we're just having a lot of fun here. All right, let's take a look at some of the uh, questions then that came in on Facebook. Um, Mr. H, I'm going to throw this one at you. Uh, it's not quite union on the spot yet, but uh, we'll, we'll ask you anyway. Um, I've got a question here uh, that came in on the Facebook site from Benjamin Later. Hi, JP. I'm playing for Richmond Rangers in the third division. And I want to ask if Western Province clubs can be sponsored with energy drinks. And that's a question that he wants to ask Mr. H in the studio. <laughs> Why should you ask me? He knows. Well, I actually don't know because I think I actually answered that question for him on the Facebook page. Um, but Benjamin, um, I, I think clubs probably arrange their own sponsorships. Um, yeah. But you do have a sponsorship rate or, uh, through Evox, who's the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby. And uh, I mean, Marvin, do you guys use a lot of supplements? Uh, is it something that you have to use during the season to stay fit and strong? Uh, some of us do. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a lot of us get our gym programs, obviously, to condition the body. And you need recovery as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're gymming with the hard training games week in, week out. You need a little bit of supplements just to get your body recovered. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
There's the question. I think you should have answered that question. Okay, let's answer that question. Let's ask the, the, the gun show on the right hand yeah. side there. Yeah. Um, Egan? You know what, just when I was younger, I didn't need those uh, nutritional supplements. Yes. I thought I didn't. But I mean, it's an individual thing. Yeah. You know, it depends what you need. If yeah. you need something more for recovery, that's why it's important that they come see you individually for what, they, what yeah. their needs are. For myself, I would say you need to know, your, as a rugby player or any sportsman, you need to know your body yeah. and what, what needs to be done, especially where recovery is concerned. With yeah. the amount of rugby we play in the Western Cape, recovery is the most important mm. so that you can be at your best every week. Mm. So it's an individual thing. And we were also talking strategically earlier on about how do you plan to get through the season. And yeah. the last thing that you want to do is find yourself, and I think this is quite important for the coaches out there, the last thing you want to do is find yourself, get halfway through the season, and you're sort of in the middle of the log and you know you've got to climb back to the top, yeah. and half your squad is underweight. Yeah. So you want to start putting on that muscle pre-season already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you don't have time during the season to put it back on. Yeah, By then, it's, it's game over. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. <laughs> during the season, it's, it's usually just maintenance. You know, you put in the hard work in the beginning, and during the season, you can just need to maintain it. Yeah. Like I said, recovery. So yeah. Recovery is, of course, the secret. So you can get very, your tomorrow's ses training yes, session yeah. as strong as you were yesterday. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, you hit that downward spiral. Um, JP asked Marvin how Temperance won Universal. Uh, the top eight champs and how they all began to cry when Vernon Palston scored the try and Ricky Africa <laughs> sunk them with a conversion and a penalty. <laughs> Why would you know about so much about temperance, <laughs> Marvin? I've got no idea, but I can imagine how bad they actually felt if they started crying. Yes. It just shows the passion mm. and the love they actually have for the game and for the club itself. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The fact that it could bring tears that you actually lost. And I've had a few of those before yes. in, my, in my days. But I've only been drunk for three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there something happened? Did you have your own so unstelled that you have a few tears? Yeah, I think that is nogal iets wat heel wat gebeur. Yeah. And then later in the end, I come it maar weer van oor af. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maar dat is alles met die passie, nee. Ik ben, yeah. ek ben jy, jy, is, jy is nou een van die goede kokke dode daar by WP Rugby. Yeah. As julle vir julle self vergelijk WP tegen ander clubs in die, in die wereld, ek ben, ek moet skat dat WP club rugby spelers meer passie het as enige ander rugby spelers in die wereld. Well, as jy net sien onder wat die toestande, wat ons saterdag gesien het, ja, soos by St. George's, mense ja. wat onder daar die toestande elke aankom in die donker oefen, ja. sonder lichte, in die modder, en hulle is daar elke saad. En hulle doen nog goed ook. Ja, ja, ek moet sê, ek, ek, ek is geskok, ek is eindelijk geskok, dat um, daar die toestand was by die veld daar, so, en uh, hoe moeilijk kan het wees, vraag jy so een paar draaikies terug te sit om die elektrisch die bed, terug aan te kry mense, en wie stel een leer? <laughs> Wie wil nou het ek een leersteel? Ek ben die leer is daar van die paal te klim en die elektricity, ek ben, nou moet jy leer vat. En hoe stap jy eindelijk weg met een leer? Ja. Het niemand vir jou gesien nie? Ja. Ek ben een leer hier oor die... Jy kan nie so met die wegstap met een leer nie. Mens en vraagjes, ne? Iemand moes gesien het daar so. Ok, so as jy die man met die leer sien, sê jy vir my, wat terug, gastro toe. <laughs> Alright, and uh, let's take a look, also another question here, coming in from uh, Marietta van die Kerk on... Um, Facebook on the uh, Cape Rugby TV Facebook page. Hi JP, we're from Johannesburg. We download and watch your program on the net. Absolutely love it. Can't believe you guys are doing such a brilliant job for club rugby. We've been involved with club rugby since our son played barefoot under eight. Our son played for Hamilton's under 20. He's at the RPC Academy. Is there any material for the under 20s we can't get to his games? Could you please appeal to viewers uh, to post videos and photos of the under 20s and that comes from um, a, a desperate mommy not what you're thinking folks literally a desperate mommy <laughs> so yes if you have any footage Egan I'm not sure why you find that so funny but well, yeah. or Marvin yourself folks if you have any footage please upload it on Facebook upload it on YouTube and share it with us and those of you that happen to accidentally miss the show or if you've got friends out of town don't forget we do upload the uh, show on a, a regular basis, um, uh, not on a regular basis, but straight away on a Friday morning, we upload this show on the Club Rugby site. Mr. H, uh, the Western Province Club Rugby site, it certainly does look like it gets a lot of action. Yes, it's quite busy, and uh, you know, all these things that we are talking about here, it's also there, so there's mm. a lot of movement there. And yeah. uh, I think everybody, like uh, Marvin said earlier, you know, before you go onto the field on a Saturday, you want to know where, you know, if we win by four points, yeah. if we win by five points, 
where is this club that we played against? Previously, this was not there. Yeah, yeah. So you, you know, you just played. But you know what? The, the part that I find interesting is that before we had the website, clubs would never see each other, never talk to each other, except for twice a year when they played against each other on, right. on, in the season. And those were the days that there were days of club rugby violence. Mm. People would build up that passion and that hatred for a cravio satrach and his net clamidio. But the, the forum on the website created this method for people to talk to each other, a, a method of communication and debate and transparency. And now the administrators can't hide anymore. But certainly people are working out their differences and having a good way of getting along on the, yeah. on the site. Previously, you could give a guy a smack and walk away and nobody would know who gave the smack. Yes. Now everybody knows who, who's who. Yes. The world has become very small. And even a few people who didn't get a smack get told they got a smack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Folks, you can of course visit that website, www.wpclubrugby.co.za. Go and check it out. It is the forum there and it is, gets pretty hot. And that is where we go left field is onto that club rugby um, a forum where we take a look at some of your question from Crims, who's got a question here uh, for uh, Mr. H. This is, of course, left field. After nine or ten games, SK first occupies top spot and uh, under 20 don't even have a bonus point loss. No question there, just a statement. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Derbies have got a huge home ground advantage. SK Warmers always struggle there and also SK Warmers have too many disruptions this week is not ideal preparation. Too injured and guys planning on Thursday for uh, Western Province against Borland. Not ideal at all. Again, no question there, but thank you very much for your uh, statements. Let's go further left field to rugby versus thugby. Another question then that comes off the website. Um, not quite sure who posted this, but the question comes up um, that he seems to have um, asked this before about the topic being raised. Mr. H, any feedback on the um, the junior scenario where Pro Sachs, uh, there was a video footage, the review and that? The, the, the high school's disciplinary committee viewed that footage. Uh, they found no intentional uh, matter there. And then uh, Primrose and the others had their own uh, inquiries into the matter. And I think the next step would be for the two groups to get together to sort it out. Yeah. The two groups, you mean Saxon and Primrose? Yeah. All right, so the Western Province Rugby Disciplinary no, Committee? No, the high school's disciplinary. The high school's yeah. disciplinary committee? They viewed Which the I didn't footage. know you've got, but yeah. you do? They viewed the video yeah. and found that there was nothing yeah. unusual yeah. in it. Yeah. But that child had pretty serious yeah, injuries, no, well, which is what everyone's going to ask. And they say, how do you look yeah. like that from a rugby game? Yeah, but you know, uh, they don't play with tutus on. Originally, it, it was a stomping yes. off the ball incident. Right. But that can't be picked up on the video. Okay. There is nothing like that. And then, you know, there were all kinds of other stories going around. And yeah. they, they, they looked at it without having anybody laying a, a charge or anything. Mm -hmm. So they just looked at it to see what has happened. And then they gave a verdict that there is no evidence uh, that can support this. But there's no, no place for this kind of thing no, in, in rugby. Not. I mean, the, the kind of things that we've seen in, in, in Super 15, players being head-butted in the back of the yeah, head, yeah. the neck twisting. Yeah. I mean, certainly, if, I would never allow, if that's what rugby is allowed to be, I would never allow my children to do that. I was disgusted no. when I saw what Bucky's Buerta has done no. on the field. No, that, that is so. Nobody wants that to happen. But then, I mean, I also played rugby. I came home every second weekend with a blue eye, or crooked nose, and it wasn't... From, from the rugby? Yeah, from the rugby. <laughs> I just want to check. Early, early <laughs> <laughs> and it was not, you know, nothing to do with... Uh, uh, yeah. uh, my face was just in, seemed to be in the way. Seemed to be in the way, <laughs> yes. Well, I think right now, just keep your face in the way of the camera. That's good enough. <laughs> but look, looking lovely today in your pink shirt, Mr. H. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We've got a couple of fan picks also that came in during the course of the show, folks. Um, we'll be looking at those. We've got some beautiful photographs of some action shots. And we'll take a look at those when we come back. Don't forget, of course, that we will be uh, looking for you on Facebook. And one of you... I'm going to draw a name out of the hat. One of you that has jumped on Facebook with us is going to win yourself a set of double tickets to go watch the Stormers at a semi-final at Newlands next week. That's a Facebook site, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. When we get back, we'll like look at your action shots. Back in a mo.
Yeah. Well, folks, welcome back. It's Cape Rugby TV. The Facebook page is growing nice and steadily. Ivy Elmerson, nice to have you along. Here we go, Stormers, here we go. Josh Wright sent us a little video here. Oh, this is a Trive Savers Rib Breakers. Not really sure that was that about, but we're going to leave it at that. Um, Denzel Raycliffe, Bruce Kermis. Um, Gilzan Reed Sassman, Melrich Steenkamp, Riaz Khan, Zulfa Fredericks, and Melrich Steenkamp. Welcome along, guys. Nice to have you along joining us on uh, Facebook. Uh, let's take a look then at some of those fan picks that came in over the week. And uh, nice to see those p pictures being posted. It's not that hard. Our very first picture comes from Ken and I, and Ken and I has sent us picks before. This is the match, of course, between Villages and False Bay. And um, Duncan Emsley there in shot for Villagers. Great picture. And of course, Fast Bay came away with a victory there. We also got a nice picture of the uh, St. George's under 20s. St. George's sending us a nice picture there from Lyndon Julius, um, the under 20 team there at St. George's. And what a beautiful location. I must say, I was very impressed with the, the mountain views there. Can't be the easiest place to live though, folks. I must say that. It's a little bit rough out there, but they're giving it absolutely the best at that club. A nice community center where people can go play rugby, play soccer, except that most of the time they have to play in the dark because they haven't managed to fix up the electricity yet. But we'll deal with that again at a later stage. In actual fact, we'll try and give you some feedback on that next week. And hopefully the councillors have got their overalls on with their electricity screwdrivers there and fix the lights and find the guy with the ladder. All right, we'll leave that at that then. Let's take another quick photo look there at Ashkab Job. Ashkab sent us a nice picture there of violets against Kelly's. There you have it. This is a photograph. For those of you that don't see rugby much, let me just explain to you. Let's go back to that picture, please. We'll go back to Violets versus Kelly's. Uh, for those of you that um, don't watch rugby, what you are seeing on screen right now in that Violets versus Kelly's picture is, uh, well, 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 we'll get back to that picture at, at, uh, in, in, a, in a moment. Um, Marvin, let me just ask you though, um, that you're, you're being a forward, you're a forward, right? No, 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 no you're, you're a backline player. <laughs> okay, so the picture that we saw in shot there with the guy standing behind the guy who was bending over with his hand on the pants of the guy who was bending over, that is what you do when you hold the guy to lift him up, supporter, right? Supporter. Okay, correct. he's the supporter. Yeah, that's correct. He's not doing anything else. No, 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 no. no, 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 no all right, no, 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 so definitely not. Just support the job. It's, it's a family a show, show. Yeah. and that's yes. what you, folks, very important <laughs> that and you, when you're doing rugby, you hold the guy, you don't let him go up in the air, okay? Yeah. You've got to bring him down, right, Egan? That's yeah. one of the reasons why I'm a backline player, yeah. so I don't have to go through that kind of thing. I don't fuss at my book, Okay, let's take a look then at some of the other pictures that have come in uh, over, the, uh, over the course of the week, also uploaded on Facebook. A nice one here from Bertram Malchas um, in that match, also Village. 8th man Neil Clegg on there in that match between False Bay and Villagers. Running through the rest of the picks there, Bertram also sent in another picture there. Dave Pewter diving over the second try of the match um, for False Bay. A nice history picture there coming in from Majid Murat. Murat family, of course, that Vilge Dunvies back in the day. Sievers Neefs van die Perl. Onder uh, 283 oud rugby spelers terug in die dag, mense. Lekker om die foto in te kry. Right, you want to win yourself 500 rands worth of Evox products? It's very easy. Just send us the name of the official sports nutrition supplier to the DHL Stormers. Tell me the name. It's a four-letter word. All right, not what you're thinking. I'm just looking for the four-letter word of that sports nutrition supplier. Send it now to 32010. They are the official sports nutrition supplier to the entire Western Province Rugby and you as a club rugby player, school rugby player are entitled to sponsorship rates from this sports nutrition company. We ran the competition last week and we pulled out another lucky winner courtesy of Evox and that 500 Rand winner goes to Peter Blichnode. Congratulations Peter, the guys from Evox will be in touch with you and uh, you win yourself 500 Rand's worth of Evox products. Congratulations, and uh, folks, if you want to win for yourself 500 rands worth of Evox products, just SMS that name to 32010. And just a favor, throw your name in there at the same time so we can help you out with that. Let's look at the matchups then. Mr. H has a couple of interesting matchups then. These are courtesy of Faisal Farley Felton, our chief <laughs> bottle washer and cook stopper at Western Province Rugby, who weekly does all the administration, man alone and uh, chose some interesting matchups for us this weekend. Big one, Hamilton's against Belar. Iggy, yeah. I'm gonna throw it right at you, eh? Yep. Hey? That's a big match for Hamilton's, especially the hotter two weeks we've had. Yeah. It's now time to turn it around. Otherwise, 
then the season is basically gone. Marvin, moving across to you, Durbel and SK Warmers. SK's top of the log at the moment. Durbel coming off a nice victory against Hammies. Definitely going to be a big, big matchup. I mean, SK Warmers beating Hamilton. So we're coming back from beating Hamilton. So definitely, we've got to make up. It really is crunch time. I mean, it's mm -hmm. getting so like competitive, Mr. H, the vibe. <laughs> the vibe in Super League, in, yeah. in all the leagues. But I mean, the vibe yeah. between these teams is just incredible at the moment. Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, if you, if you just go, uh, if you look what is, we're now right in the middle. Mm -hmm. We're now entering the second half. Yeah. So now you know, nine more games, mm. eight more games, seven it's more tight. games. It's tight, it's tight. Some of the other fixtures then over the weekend, folks. These are all more picks in a Super League B than as Collegians against Young Peoples. That's a match you have to go watch at Lentechir. And at Rosmead, Primrose take on Panil Villages. Big one there. Rangers up against St. George's. That's also another pick at Surrey Estate. Go check it out. And Young Wesley's against Young Stars. Those are your picks for the week. A number of other matches coming up as well. Mr. H, um, uh, any matches there that jump out for you? I think the, the uh, Milneton Strand United, they always have a, you know, a tight game, so, yeah. And then, obviously, you know, Primrose and Peniel, I just want to get back to them, you know. Primrose is struggling to get away from the bottom of the... Yeah. And Peniel is, you know, trying to stay in the middle mm. or get higher up. So, Primrose shall the Rosa by Hartmutson. <laughs> what a song. I feel for you said, I was in for my best that I've been yeah, ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I raise it. Again. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to check, yeah. <laughs> Justi Duty and uh, Johan van Deventer, Nathaniel Minnar, and Melrich Steenkamp, our latest Facebook visitors, jumping on there looking to win a set of double tickets. I'm going to give that to you in a second now. We're going to choose Iggy, pick yeah. of the week for you. I have to come back to the uh, Esco Ormus Durbanville game. The only reason is because both those teams are coming off such a high the last two weeks that is going to be it's, the sparks are going to fly in that game. So that's my pick. Quick one from your side. Hamilton's. Hamilton's. Against Bell. That's the big one. Hamilton's Bell Ha. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Well, he, certainly looks he's like that. each other. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Each See other. how he takes <laughs> the attention yeah. away. Yeah, he's of course hoping Hamilton's will lose. Yeah, it. that's exactly <laughs> what. <laughs> Right then, having randomly picked off the Facebook group, one of you is uh, the lucky winner then, and it is Josh Ratz. Josh, congratulations. You win for yourself a set of double tickets, which you cannot get anywhere because I think it's pretty much sold out. You win yourself a set of double tickets to go and watch the Stormers uh, take on uh, that semi-finalist at Newlands. That's home ground. That's going to be a cracker of a match. Make sure you jump in there. Folks, don't forget then, you can see the repeat of Cape Rugby on uh, Thursdays at 3 o'clock and at 11 o'clock. Egan, Marvin, Hermie, thanks for joining me. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks, Hopefully we'll see you guys again next week, same time, same place. Folks, join us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. See you next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye.